Hello YouTube, this is Largo64 with an answer to a, um, uh, a text comment on my video, and I'm going to do this as a video response to that video, called Re Why People Laugh at Creationists, the Scientific Bible. Now, this YouTuber named His Truth Be Known has quoted the late Harvard evolutionary geologist Stephen Jay Gould. And he's done so in the same manner that many have quoted Gould and others, out of context and actually misrepresenting Gould's position. Now, Gould is dead now and doesn't actually speak for himself anymore. The quote that's here, and I'm going to read the quote first, and then I'll tell you where it might have come from. Uh, the, the quote is, the extreme rarity of transitional forms in the fossil record persists as the trade secret of paleontology. The evolutionary trees that adorn our textbooks have data only at the tips and nodes of their branches. The rest is inference, however reasonable, not the evidence of fossils. Now, that may be a direct quote, but it's quote mining. And the only places I could find that quote, because I looked it up um, on um, uh, Google, are Answers in Genesis. This is one page where this quote is done. Um, another called All About the Journey. The letter T in the word about is formed in a little cross. You can get an idea from that. And Dinosaur Human Coexistence we uh, um, web page with other creationist facts. These are creationist websites. Uh, the, those are the first three in the Google list that, uh, that have this particular quotation. I'm guessing, just by the general nature of this and other um, uh, quotes that I've seen and, and um, uh, comments that have been made in comment sections, that uh, the individual, his truth be known, didn't really look any further than that. But I did. And I'm going to let uh, Dr. Gould answer this for himself. Now the quote that I just qu gave you was quoted in about 1977. What I'm going to give you now is from Jay Gould himself um, from a book. It's called Stephen Jay Gould, Evolution F as Fact and Theory, May 1981 from Hens Teeth and Horses Toes, New York, W.W. W. Norton and Company, 1994 pages 253 through 262. I'm going to start at the top of this. I'm going to make it in smaller chunks so that I can divide this up because this is going to definitely last longer than 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to be at least two videos and possibly three if I start throwing in some comments. I might very well do that. Anyway, to begin, Evolution as Fact and Theory by Stephen J. Gould. Kirtley Mather, who died last year at age 90, was a pillar of both science and Christian religion in America and one of my dearest friends. The difference of a half century in our ages evaporated before our common interests. The most curious thing we shared was a battle we each fought at the same age. For Kirtley had gone to Tennessee with Clarence Darrow to testify for evolution at the Scopes trial of 1925. When I think that we are enmeshed again in the same struggle for one of the best documented, most compelling, and exciting concepts in all science, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. According to idealized principles of scientific discourse, the arousal of dormant issues should reflect fresh data that give renewed life to abandoned notions. Those outside the current debate may therefore be excused for suspecting that creationists have come up with something new, or that evolutionists have generated some serious internal trouble. But nothing has changed. The creationists have presented not a single new fact or argument. Darrow and Bryan were at least more entertaining than we lesser antagonists today. The rise of creationism is politics, pure and simple. It represents one issue, and by no means the major concern, of the resurgent evangelical right. Arguments that seemed kooky just a decade ago have re-entered the mainstream. The basic attack of modern creationists falls apart on two gener general accounts before we even reach the supposed factual details of their assault against evolution. First, they play upon a vernacular misunderstanding of the word theory. 
to convey the false impression that we evolutionists are covering up the rotten core of our edifice. Second, they misuse a popular philosophy of science to argue that they are behaving scientifically in attacking evolution, yet the same philosophy demonstrates that their own belief is not science, and that scientific creationism is a meaningless and self-contradictory phrase, an example of what Orwell called new speak. In the American vernacular, theory often means imperfect fact part of a hierarchy of confidence running downhill from fact to theory to hypothesis to guess. Thus creationists can, and do, argue evolution is only a theory, and intense debate now rages about many aspects of the theory. If evolution is less than a fact, and scientists can't even make up their minds about the theory, then what confidence can we have in it? Indeed, President Reagan echoed this argument before an evangelical group in Dallas when he said, in what I devoutly hope was campaign rhetoric, well, it is a theory. It is a scientific theory only, and it has in recent years been challenged in the world of science, that is, not believed in the scientific community to be as infallible as it once was, end quote. Well, evolution is a theory. It is also a fact. And facts and theories are different things, not rungs in a hierarchy of increasing certainty. Facts are the world's data. Theories are structures of ideas that explain and interpret facts. Facts do not go away when scientists debate rival theories to explain them. Einstein's theory of gravitation replaced Newton's, but apples did not suspend themselves in midair pending the outcome and humans evolved from ape-like ancestors, whether they did so by Darwin's proposed mechanism or by some other yet to be discovered. Moreover, a fact does not mean absolute certainty. The final proofs of logic and mathematics flow deductively from stated premises and achieve certainty only because they are not about the empirical world. Evolutionists make no claim for perpetual truth though creationists often do, and then attack us for a style of argument that they themselves favor. In science, fact can only mean confirmed to such a degree that it would be perverse to withhold provisional assent. I suppose that applies that, that apples, I should say, might start to rise tomorrow, but the possibility does not merit equal time in physics classrooms. Okay, I'm going to cut this off at this point. It's a little over seven minutes um, and make this um, volume one or part one. Um, I um, This looks like it, mis it may end up in only two parts, but it's possibly, it could possibly go to three. Um, I, I hope I don't uh, bore you with this. I think it's important to let uh, Dr. Gould speak on this in, in this way, because um, uh, the quote mining that I've seen, and beginning with the uh, with the one that I just um, uh, supplied here from his truth be known, uh, is often used. They use Dr. Gould's own words, um, taken in a little bite, a little chunk out of context, in order to try to discredit his other work, and uh, it just isn't true. Now, giving his truth be known the benefit of the doubt, maybe he doesn't know that this is just a, a quote mine, uh, and that, uh, that uh, Dr. Gould actually thinks otherwise. When this video is finished, this is the video in two or three parts, he will know better if he bothers to see it, and uh, then if he continues using that quote, he will simply be dishonest. Um, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here. I don't think he is dishonest. I think he actually thinks that Gould uh, was um, was uh, recanting all of his former work. Uh, why he would do that is a, is a, another matter, but I, I don't know why Gould would. But it will be made very clear from these videos that that is not the case. And I would hope that... Um, his truth be known, really is interested in truth, and ceases to use this quote. Anyway, this is all for this particular episode here. I'm going to uh, work on uh, the next part in just a few minutes here.